Well, the Conservative MP, Marcus Fish, uh, joins us now, uh, I'm pleased to say. Thank you very much for being on the programme uh, this evening. It's good to have you. You tweeted earlier today to say, on this, I side with Diane Abbott. Can you just explain what you meant when you tweeted that? Yeah, so I, I have no hesitation in saying that I feel very um, much solidarity with Diane uh, today. I think it's terrible what she's had to endure today, what um, individuals up and down the country seeing this story have had to endure, fears that they might have had. Um, and yeah, these the, these sorts of racist remarks, I don't know this, this person who's um, supposed to have said them, um, but what has been reported is is clearly racist and clearly completely, completely wrong. You, you cannot say things like that. Um, and, um, and and I'm really sorry for, for all the people up and down the country who have been affected by that, including Diane. And while I, um, I don't agree with her on an awful lot of things, um, I will defend her, her dignity um, as a person every day of the week. Um, fair enough. Um, we can sort of say here to here to that, I think. Um, now, Frank Castor is the biggest donor to the Conservative Party. He's given £10 million to the Conservative Party. You're very clear in saying his remarks were racist. <coughs> Do you think he needs to give the money back? Well, look, it, that's, um, that's a decision, obviously, for the party. Um, I'm, I'm not involved in the party hierarchy. Um, I, I actually think it'd be be nice to see if we could try and turn um, a bad day into a good day, if um, he really is remorseful and that's not who he is and he, that is what he says is the case, then why don't we try to do something good to come out of this and may perhaps uh, think about trying trying to put together a, another donation as much as he's given to the Tory party to uh, do do good things for, for example, to help un, 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 underprivileged uh, young pe people start businesses or whatever it is that, that they want to do, whether they're white, black or purple. Um, that that kind of thing, I think it would be a, be a nice outcome from this. And I would encourage that, I think, rather than trying to rake over the past with these things. Offsetting his remarks if you like. Um, now, the Prime Minister has, in the last 20 minutes or so, uh, put out a statement through a spokesperson where he does say the remarks were racist. But it's taken quite a long time for him to do that. And, you know, in that time, you've had ministers like Mel Stride coming out trying to effectively defend the position uh, of um, Mr Hester, saying the comments were wrong, but saying that they weren't about race in his view. Do you think the PM was a bit slow? Well, uh, I, I can't really uh, uh, say what he was up to because I don't know. But, um, yeah, I, I, I was a bit surprised that there wasn't a stronger con con condemnation earlier because it's clearly a thing that is going to affect a lot of people. Um, so, I, yeah, I, I, um, I'm very pleased that he has come out and, and led on this issue now. Uh, he's a good guy. He's absolutely right to be proud of the aspiration um, that uh, the Conservative Party represents. Um, and um, he's very passionate about making sure that opportunity gets to every part of the country and, and every colour of every person in the country. And that is the sort of leadership that I would like him to be showing over this, because that vision is absolutely what this next election is going to be about. Um, and, and I'd like to see him coming out all, all guns blazing on that issue. There's another story that I was keen to uh, ask you about because our um, deputy political editor, uh, Sam Coates, has picked up that the PM was meeting Graham Brady, the uh, chair of the 1922 committee. Now, we don't know what was said in that meeting, but of course, we do know that Graham Brady is the letters man, if you like, the, the, the guy in a grey suit who goes to you know, tell the PM when there's a, a problem with the backbenchers. We don't know if that was what was going on. Perhaps that was what was distracting him. I don't know. I, I can't speak to that either. I don't know any more than anybody else does about that. But I mean, he's, I'm, I'm sure, very focused on his incredibly busy schedule. When you're a PM, you you really don't have a minute to yourself in the whole day. Um, and, and so I, I imagine that uh, 
that he's got all sorts of things to be thinking about. But I, I would say focus on that that vision, focus on that uh, that way forward that we need to communicate to the country um, because that is what's at stake at the next election. It is about aspiration for millions of people, and that is something that I'm convinced only the Conservative Party can deliver, and Rishi Sunak's the man to deliver it for us. You're very clear that Rishi Sunak is, in your view, the man to deliver uh, that Conservative vision, but you can see why perhaps some of your colleagues might be feeling a bit disgruntled. You've got this racism row um, around a Tory party donor, um, you've got a budget that many people felt was slightly lacklustre, then you've got, of course, the polling above all, uh, the Conservatives up to 27 points behind in the polls uh, at the minute. How would you describe the mood on the backbenchers? Well, we all want to see that vision that I was talking about uh, communicated. It, it is a real thing. This is not a... Um, this isn't a parlour game. We're, we're, we're involved in uh, try, trying to make the country a better place and, and, and provide those opportunities for individuals up and down the country to, uh, to make the most of their potential. And I think that the budget was a good first, first step. I think there are um, other things that we can be doing to really put uh, ro rocket boosters under the economy and get, get things going. But I'm I'm a big supporter of the Conservative programme and, and our plan to uh, get, get that going. And I don't think the opposition has any answers or any credibility on these issues. So, How yes, it has been a tough few years with, with the pandemic and having to borrow all that, that money. That was always going to change a lot. And I remember sitting in my garden thinking when that furlough scheme came out, this changes everything. And yes, it, around the whole world, um, things are very different politically than, than they were before that. But we need, to, we need to graft and we need to get on with the day job and we need to do the job of, of increasing that opportunity for everybody and communicating that that's what the vision is. OK, thank you very much uh, indeed.